Hello, my friends. How are you tonight? Thank you for joining me. Uh, tonight, we got a couple topics that uh, <laughs> I'll just I'll, I'll refer to it as the alarm clock's going off, and we keep hitting the snooze button, America. I don't know what is going on with us, but just some of the latest things here that I'd like to talk to you about. First of all is balloons. <laughs> uh, we had a Chinese spy balloon that left China, floated across to Alaska, down from Alaska, through Canada, through the almost entire United States, over military sites, tactical sites at that, Air Force bases, was pretty much totally ignored by our president until it got out over the ocean off of South Carolina coast. And then we shot it down. Now we are in the process of raising the parts to analyze this thing to see what it really was. China, of course, is saying it was a weather balloon. I have my own theories, uh, and they're just that. They're my theories. I have nothing to back them up. Um, after that, we shot down more objects that we can't identify. We had a cylindrical shaped object, or a couple of those, and then we had an octagonal shaped object, and that's kind of like a stop sign shape, if, you, if you're not aware of octagonal. And so far, as of today, which is February 15th, we have no clue what these objects were. Now, a couple of the pilots said that they didn't even know how these objects were staying aloft in the air. From the news that I heard, and this is what don't make sense, is that the radar failed to pick these objects up because of the curvature of the earth. And the radars had to be realigned in order to do that. Now, <laughs> my question is this. If we caught a balloon leaving China from the ground up, tracked it all the way, its entire flight path, until it was shot down, and we can we can pick up small planes like uh, Cessnas, Moonies that fly anywhere from a thousand feet to you know ten thousand feet. We can track these planes with pinpoint precision. I mean, with with no question about what they are, where they're at. Uh, remote controlled airplanes can also be detected by radar. Uh, <laughs> how did we miss these objects? They said they were the size of small vehicles. How did we miss them? Now that would lead one to think that they either didn't come from a foreign country and that they were lifted straight from the ground up or did they really exist at all? I have yet to see any photographs, any evidence really other than, than a report that they existed. There's no, no evidence yet of it at all. So we'll kind of put the brakes on that one for now. But the Chinese spy balloon... I, I, I think it kind of did get blown off course. I don't think it was intended to go across our country. I think its uh, intentions were up in the Arctic. And 
That's my opinion. Like I said, that's just my theory. But if you're not aware of what's going on in the Arctic, it's uh, it's melting a whole lot quicker than it should. And it has been said that there is been detected the largest ever deposits of oil and natural gas there. Russia's been looking at it now for quite some time. And guess who the financer was for Russia to do all their research? If you hadn't guessed by now, it was China. So maybe that balloon had another purpose in life. Why it took us so long to shoot it down was a debris field could could injure some people. Hmm. Wasn't buying that one from the beginning. Uh, <laughs> the alarms are going off, America. We're hitting the snooze button. Now, our president is clearly, he's probably as qualified right now to run this country as I am. And I know I'm not qualified. And our vice president is probably as qualified as I am as well. And there again, I'm not qualified to run this country. I, I don't think we have a very strong United States government right now. And the government is the elected officials. We the people are the United States of America. Our government is the people we elected to run the country. Let me say that again. We elected them to run our country. So if they're not running our country properly, maybe it's time we fire them. Just a thought. We have all kinds of things going bad right now in this world that, I mean, it's, you, you turn the news on, it, one day it's... Uh, Okay, for instance, San Francisco now is considering putting in a red light district. You know, do they really need that? With the crime rate already like it is? I mean, that's, I can see a lot of problems right there. A lot of problems. Maybe they don't see it, but I think what'll happen is it's gonna cause a lot of women to, uh, Victims of sexual assault. I really do. And I hope I'm wrong, but that's, that's kind of what I see coming. Uh, we, we have a uh, nuclear engineer who worked for our government, named Sam Brenton, who, who uh, identifies with a pronoun they or them. It's the LGBTQ society is a strong advocate for that uh, society. <sighs> okay. Male or female is it. I mean, there is no, there is no other sexes. People are trying to identify as male, as female, female as male. They're trying to identify as, as animals now. You know, I'm a cat. I identify as a dog. I identify as a, as a chicken. <laughs> Uh, you, you can't do that. I mean, our, our government's allowing this, and it's stupid. It's just plain stupid. If you're a man, you're a man. You, you can't be a they. I'm, I'm thinking that if you, you know, any other time if you say they, you, you sound like a, multi-personality having schizophrenic or something 
Like you got multi per, multiple personalities that make you do things. Uh, this is not a dumb man, by the way. I mean, he is a nuclear engineer that was working in our government on nuclear waste being being used as propulsion for for different things, you know, in the nuclear field. True enough, he didn't have, you know, he didn't have access to the button. I mean, I'm not giving him that credit, but the man's pretty smart. You know, he went to, I don't remember what all colleges, but I know he, you know, he went to MIT and he's, you know, he was born in like the eighties around the time I graduated. So I'd put him, you know, nearly 40 years old. He, he's a smart man, but he's a confused man. He, he needs, he needs a little, he needs a lot of God in his life. I don't know what a job like that would pay. I would think, I would think in excess of 50,000 a year at least, you know, 50 to maybe as high as 100 and something. I don't know. I don't have a clue what a job like that would pay. He was arrested, felony arrested, for stealing women's luggage. And... <laughs> Uh, you you throw your whole life away for something stupid like that? Okay, okay. Let's 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 move on. Whew. We we got to figure out how we are. We're going we're going to have to we're going to have to find us an avenue that will allow us to get some kind of order back in our country, America. The days of, of getting your, your butt whooped as a kid is over. You know, being taught discipline with a belt or a switch, those days are over. Nowadays, you have to teach a kid with a, with a time out. You know, when we was in school, me and a friend of mine was talking the other day, and he said, "You know, when we was growing up, we had we had bullies. You know, it's what they would refer to them as today as bullies." And he said, "You know, the one thing about bullies was it, it taught it taught the other kids character. It taught them how to defend themselves. It taught them how to grow up. It taught them how to to speak up for themselves." And and he's right, you know. Now, picking on a weaker kid don't seem like the right thing to do. But if it toughens that kid up, then was it all bad? Really? You know what I mean? If it, if it gives him character, was it all bad? I mean, you know, abuse, you know, I'm not saying stomp the kid's face in every day or nothing, but you know, a little name calling never hurt nobody. A little pushing and shoving never really hurt nobody. If it builds character. You know, now if you <clears throat> you put a kid out here in a in a in a in a race, a foot race with five or six other kids and the gun goes off, they all take off running, the kid in last place gets a gets a participation trophy. And he goes home, he puts that participation trophy on his on his wall, and what he learned from it? That he ain't got to try no harder next time, he's gonna get a trophy. But now if he finishes dead last and he don't get nothing for it, nothing but a hey, good job. And he goes over to his friend's house to won the race and sees that trophy up on the shelf. If he wants one, he's gonna work harder. He's going to practice, whether it be track, football, baseball, hockey, soccer, whatever it is. Quit giving these kids a trophy for everything they do because of their feelings. Their feelings are going to get hurt. Their, their, their heart's going to get broke. 
And they're going to grow up with heartbreaks. And they're going to grow up with scrapes and bruises. And that's part of growing up. That's a part of learning what it is to be an adult. When you're an adult and you don't have a good paying job and, a, and the boss man tells you, you got to work 40 hours this week and you make enough money to just barely pay your bills. One week something happens, you miss a day and you can't pay a bill. Your bill collector ain't going to say, oh, it's okay, Mr. Weeks. It's okay. Don't worry about paying them this week. You can catch them up. No, they want their money. Which means you got to figure out a way to make it happen. Now, you can't have snowflakes <laughs> that, that think the world owes them something. The world don't owe you nothing. The world don't owe me nothing. This is America, home of the free. If you want it, get out and get it. Hustle for it. Now they want white people to feel like we're supposed to be guilty for being white. Now, I'm sorry. I'm not mad at any black folks. And as far as I know, ain't no black folks mad at me. But I'll be darned if I'm going to be guilty for being white. Now, I'm not. I mean, if... If my ancestors from from 300 years ago owned slaves, which I don't think they did, because my ancestors, as far as I've traced back, were as poor as dirt. So if anything, they were out there with the slaves. <clears throat> then, you know, it was, it was part of the times. I mean, we can't go back and change history. But what we can do is keep it from repeating. Now, I'm not I'm not sitting here condoning slave ownership at all. I don't think any human should be owned by another human. But with that being said, if you're in the workforce, you have a job to be at at a certain time. You have a job to be at for a certain time. You have to be there for a certain time. Now, that puts you being there at a certain time and staying there until a certain time. You have a time you can go to break. You have a time you can go to eat. And you have a time you have to come back after you eat. The only difference right there is you're getting checked at the end of the week. You're getting a check. That's it. Uh, slaves had... Poor conditions, very poor conditions. They were they were barely fed. Which I mentioned chitlins in one of my videos. I don't know if you, I don't know if you subscribe to this channel or not. If you don't, please do, uh, and and go back and watch some of my videos. But I talk about chitlins in one of the videos, and I said I wasn't gonna get into it in that video about the history of chitlins. But the history of chitlins comes back from slavery. It goes back that far because the slaves didn't get to eat the best part of the hog. They had to do what they had to do to survive. And they were survivors. They survived. They knew how to survive. They worked their butts off. They did, they did everything they could do. They were a strong race of people. They are a strong race of people today. The media don't want us, us being white people and them being black people, finding a middle ground to where we can all be happy, to where we can live together in unison. They don't want that. Because if you get the white people and the black people and the Mexican people and the Asian people, all the different races here in this country, if you get them together, and you get us living together in unison, in, in happiness, to where we're not at each other's throat all the time, <laughs> they're in trouble. Our government will not tolerate that, trust me. Now, like I said, 
I'm not mad at any black folks, and I don't think any black folks are mad at me. I'll ask my friends next time I see them, you know, are you mad at me for something? I mean, did I do something? Because as far as I know, I haven't done a thing. I haven't done anything to any, any person of color, white, black, yellow, brown. I get along with anybody gets along with me. And I think everybody else is about the same way. Now, you know, we got all this, all this violence going on right now with the police. And, and I can't condone police violence at all. Uh, I will say some of it is, is uncalled for. Some of it is not. Some of it is, is untrained officers scared. You know, scared of dying. Put yourself in that position. You know, if you if you feel like you're fixing to die and you're scared, you know, you're going to do what you can or what you think you have to. Is there a training out there that, that can teach you and get you out of that fear of dying? I don't think so. I don't think you could train the fear of death out of somebody. I think the people training ought to recognize that and say, you might not be qualified to be a cop. But see, we fall right back to that give them a trophy syndrome. We can't tell people, we can't tell kids in school today, the teachers can't, to shut up and sit down. A teacher friend of mine said she cannot tell a student to shut up. She has to tell that student to find another avenue to express himself or go to the principal's office. Uh, our teacher used to have a board. We had one teacher had a strap. We had another teacher had a cane. And <laughs> them, you know, hey, them's the days. But we grew up with character. We grew up with manners. We grew up with respect. That's what we're missing today. We're missing respect. We're missing manners. And we are missing character. If your mama made you go out and break a switch like my mama did when I was a kid and you went out to that tree and you come back in there with a switch that's four foot long, big around as your thumb, thinking she won't hit me with this, you're badly wrong. My mama would take that broomstick you brought in and whoop you with it till it looked like a toothpick when she got through. If you went out to that same switch tree and you come back in there with a little bitty, little bitty frail pole that looked like a coat hanger, that big around and thinking, you know, I won't be able to feel this, well, you're wrong again because then you're going out there to break another. And if you come back in there with the wrong one then, she's going to get her own. Never make your mama go get her own switch. Never. <laughs> And my mama used to give me a whooping, and whatever word she'd say, there was a lick in it. I mean, if she said a, a word, there was a lick. Don't you do that ever again. You hear me? And she got long-winded. You got the crap beat out of you. But you know something? I loved that woman to death. She taught me character. She taught me manners. She taught me respect. I didn't grow up too bad of a person. I hadn't killed anybody. I don't rob nobody. I don't do drugs. I don't get out running around causing problems all over town. I, I don't I don't know America. We got to we got to hear this alarm clock. We got to wake up. I know we can't tackle all these, these problems at once. I understand that, but we need to start tackling these problems one at a time, and we need to find one that we can we can join together on and, and win. Put that one to sleep, tackle another one. Let our voices be heard for a change. Let let white people and and black people join hands, join forces. Put. 
put the put the hatchets down that the media wants you to tote. Because that's the only reason anything's getting stirred up is the media. They do not want us happy as a country. They love seeing us divided. It creates more news for them. Think about it. They have no news to tell. They don't have a job. Let's don't be their news. Let's let's figure out how to make this work. I mean, we're the only ones can. I don't know what to do. I mean, made a couple phone calls, you know, to to senator's office. I said, that went over like a fart in a whirlwind. You get absolutely nowhere with that. And they always say the the squeakiest wheel gets greased first. Well, I ain't making enough noise, I don't guess. I, I don't, I mean, I really wish I knew what to do to, to make a lot of noise. I would like to see our country strong again. I'd like to see our country proud again. I'd like to see where people are proud to be American again. Right now, America ain't got a whole lot to make you proud of. And that's sad to say. Because it's the greatest country on earth. We have freedoms that... <laughs> I mean, these, these people don't even realize how free they are. The theys and the hims and the hers and the, and the, and the its. They, they don't have a clue. They tried to get away with this crap from other countries. Whew, it'd be bad. It really would. Well, America, I have fussed enough. And what the Herald is, is a channel I thought up one day, just, you know, a, a way of me, I guess, expressing myself about ideas that I have. And I thought, you know, I'll, I'll share these ideas with people. Maybe there's somebody out there that thinks the way I do. And I hope there is. Maybe there's some people out there that don't think the way I do, but, you know, but still watch. And if you're watching and you like what I got to say, please, please subscribe. YouTube won't, won't uh, let you get into their main algorithm until you get users. Uh, it's from some about monetizing you can't do that until you get a thousand subscribers and oh god a bunch of hours i think like four thousand hours or something of watch time you know stuff that could take years to do uh you, you get youtube channels like this one guy i, I watched him the other day He's got hundred millions of, of subscribers. He goes by Mr. Beast. Uh, young guy, very young guy. Uh, apparently really, really smart and, and has this YouTube thing figured out. He, uh, from the videos I watched, he does a lot of good uh, for a lot of people. And that was, that was pretty cool to, to watch a young man his age. Now, they have a lot of fun. I mean, you know, don't get me wrong. And I don't blame him for having fun. I mean, that's what it's all about, have fun. Uh, apparently, he, he does pretty well financially through sponsors and, and YouTube because he gives quite a bit of money away. And, and if you don't know about him, my little channel ain't going to help him none, but if you don't know about him, it's Mr. Beast, and he's uh, like I said, he's a he's quite a young man. My hats off to him. He's uh, he's doing a lot of good out there. Uh, it's it's channels like his that that are making a lot of money, and. Would I be happy to grow my channel to where I could I could actually make some money? Yep. 
would I do good with it? Yep. I could I could see I could see doing a lot of good things with it. Will it happen in three or four years? I don't know. But I do know one thing. Without your help, it won't go nowhere. I do know that. So help me if you can, America. Just like and subscribe and share. Tell your friends about me. If you if you like what you see, you know, tell a hundred people. If you don't like what you see, tell a thousand people. And with that being said, have a blessed night. Remember, I love you. God loves you more. Have a great night, America.